Welcome, I'm Magnus Persson from Voices and I will make a very short and brief uh, overview of the new features in our Voices VR producer 3.1 release. Uh, let's start with some GUI related features. We have uh, the graphs on top here, the CPU usage and the GPU usage. Uh, we also have uh, a new feature in the player view and uh, you see the icon down here when you click that one you will actually get into a player view in this preview window so let's click it now you see you're in a player view here so this makes it a lot easier to position objects in your scenes and i can go back to the correct projection we uh, also have a, like a true full screen mode and uh, you reach uh, this setting in the tools and the options menu where you have the window mode on top here. You can do window, which we do now, or you can do full screen or you can do spanning full screen. With spanning full screen, you can actually uh, spread uh, the voices GUI over several screens. And uh, that, that could be very useful when you use the player because you could have a 360 video player on several screens around you. That's a really cool feeling. But let's try the full screen mode here. So this is a real full screen mode now. <coughs> uh, let's move on. Uh, the, the overlays rendering has been improved in 3.1. We have a couple of features here the a, a better anti-aliasing and uh, something we call super sampling and together these two improves the rendering quite a lot so let's have a look at this video here which has a uh, <clears throat> frame on top of it I'll take it away and show you I usually put a PNG picture with a frame and with ha which has transparency on the outside of the frame to get a, a better anti-aliasing. We get it from Photoshop. Uh, now the new settings are also available on the tools options menu here where you have the anti-aliasing. I always have it selected and where you have the super sampling. So let's say we do the super sampling to three. What this means is that on our internal cube map projection, we will use three times the resolution uh, than uh, on the output. As you know, a cube map has lower resolution on the, on the poles, north and south poles. So this is a way of sort of compensating for that. And as you see now, this looks really good. So this is a great improvement to the quality of, of uh, the overlays rendering. Uh, we also have uh, some stereo features, so all the overlays we're rendering could be rendered in stereo and you can set uh, the offsets and the convergence for the stereo effects. It's in the same menu, tools, options, and these are the settings for the offsets of the left and right eye. And this is the convergence setting, as you see it's on 7 meters now. and. Uh, let me just show you a picture that explains a little bit how this is set up. So let's say <coughs> uh, these are your eyes. You could then set an offset on the x-axis to get the distance between the eyes. Our standard setting is, is uh, 6.5 centimeters distance here. Uh, and uh, you can also set an, an offset in Z which will sort of give you the distance from the center to your eyes uh, from the axis on which the head is rotating when you turn it. I usually would set this to something like five centimeters or something. You could try and find your own value. The convergence distance is the distance on which an object uh, is rendered the same way in the left eye as in the right eye. We can have a look at this. 
So this object now is positioned on seven meters exactly. So if we now start rendering in stereo, I'll go to stereo up here under the rendering menu. Now we get a left and right eye toggle here. You can see that this object is rendered the same way in left and right eye, while this object, which is it's on only minus a half meter, that is, let's put it a bit, little bit further away. So now you see that that object is closer and, and it's rendered differently in the left and right eye while this object is on the convergence distance. If I move uh, this video closer, or sorry, that was further away, closer, you will see that it is now moving slightly. Let's set this back to mono. Good. And move on. So, we also have some new uh, output features. Uh, we have uh, Facebook. Uh, so, if we close this output I have set up, we can choose Facebook. And uh, this is the same interface that you are used to, but uh, now we also have this login button, with, which will allow you to log in using our new uh, uh, Facebook integration. I can't show it because our application is still not approved by Facebook. I hope it is when you watch this and so that you can pr try it out yourself. Uh, but if you log in, we will use a cube map projection over Facebook and that will improve the user experience by well roughly 30% along the equator so so that is something really good uh, let's go back now and set up a SDI streaming here so we're back In 3.1, you can also set up multiple SDIs out. So the way this works is that you can just click add extra output device. And now I have to select a different card here, of course. So right now we're sending a 3840 by 2160 output on two cards. So the same signal twice. If we're doing this in stereo, you see we get a like a left eye on the top and the right eye on the bottom and if i set a 2160 offset on the second output now i'm actually having the left eye in a in a 2160p resolution on the first output and the right eye which is offset by 2160 on the second output. So this is 4K per eye output from the system. But now I will uh, remove that one and I will go back to mono again. Uh, we also have a, a new auto cut feature. It's just a simple thing that if you forget to, to cut or fade your preview to the, to the live out when you start a stream, it will automatically cut. Very small thing. Still, it's new. So, when it comes to stitching, we have a couple of new features here as well. One is that you can now reset calibration. I won't show you, but it's under the, the calibration tab. Uh, so they will just reset your calibration so you can redo it. Uh, we also have a, a new way of uh, adjusting the horizon. To show this, I will actually open up uh, a stitched video. So I have a Ccam S1 standing outside here. This one. Uh, and uh, let us adjust the horizon of this one. So we open the horizon tab. And now you can actually manually drag in the egg correct like this until you're satisfied. Then you would sort of close that tab and save it like that we also have some new uh, 
depth map controls and uh, those are under the stitching tab and if you select GPU out to here you will also have the possibility to select the resolution of your depth map now it's on low and I think this is such a simple stitching scenario so even on the low resolution we have a very good result and if I go up to high may change a little bit but not too much but if you're in a more difficult stitching situation uh, the resolution of the depth map has a it has a big uh, impact on the stitching you get a much better stitching on a higher resolution the minimum distance is is sort of a, you know a threshold that that if if the algorithm will show a shorter distance we will still keep the depth map on 80 centimeters in this case and same thing with the max distance if the algorithm will measure something larger than 15 meters will still stick at 15. the speed if you want adaptive stitching or if you have a moving camera or something you could set that one to maximum of 10 and then it will adapt quicker but probably you'll get some noise in the stitching as well let's see if we can find that we have some noise here so you have to be a bit careful about the speed here and it's better actually to keep it low normally yeah those were the uh, the depth map controls positioning of stitch zones so in 3.1 i'll show the stitch zones we have the possibility to move stitch zones to do that you need to add a control for 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 the camera pair you want to move so now we have a control for one and two which is this stitch zone so and now i can move it within the area where we have overlap so maybe you have some strange objects here close to the camera then you can move the stitch zone and that is something you can work with during your live broadcast without dropping frames as well uh, stereo stitching so uh, we can render all the overlays in stereo but we can also stitch in stereo so let's now set the rendering to stereo and then let's go to our camera i will take the stitch zones away and now if we go to the stitch section here and we go to advanced this is the advanced tab here we have a light field render button here if i click that one now suddenly we are rendering in stereo and uh, uh, I see some smart artifacts here Be of course this camera is not a stereo camera so, so it won't work totally but but i'll just show you that it's actually doing some stereo here what you get is that you get stereo in the in the overlap zones this is the one of the stitch zones uh, when we were in mono so we have some overlap here if i toggle with this button here you'll see that left and right eye are actually rendered in a different way here so you have stereo in this area here and this is interesting you can actually render stereo from any any camera and uh, of course you need 100 percent overlap to get a 360 degree stereo let's now turn that off again and let's render mono on the output So we also have some new features on the input side of this. We have some improved cropping features and we have some uh, possibility to clone an input stream. To show these two, I will try to ingest a, uh, I need to save this, uh, I will ingest a, a Ricoh Theta uh, S camera, which has two circles on one single 1080. So I will no we'll do it from the beginning so let's add oh we need to save sorry desktop live productions test this is scene 5 save now when it's saved we can add a stitched video 
and we can add an input. And in this case, we're using a match, match well uh, capture card. So I think it's number four. Yeah, there it is. Now you can see this is the picture from the Theta S. It has two circles on one single 1080. So now the way to get this one into voices so we can stitch it is to make two videos out of it. And that's the clone stream feature. What I'm gonna do is to add a second input. So you see now we have a second input here. And then as type, I will set it to clone stream and it will cl clone stream one. So now we have two inputs from the same source. And if we start with the uh, input one, this one, and let's use the left circle there. Well, what I will do is to crop the left side by 960, and then I can do circular crop. And as you see now, the center of the circular crop adjusts to, to the, the linear cropping I'm doing. I need to do some more on the bottom here. Now I can get a pretty perfect circle. I would do the same on the second input here and just crop from the left. And then when I'm done, I could actually stitch this one in voices. So that's a new feature. And that was more or less it. I just wanted to show you, I, I promised I'll show you uh, where you, how to find out if you're on the edge when it comes to GPU resources. And uh, so, uh, you see here we have a dropped frames uh, indicator. If you set on to zero and then you go into our uh, mosaic view, this one is, is the one that is taking the most GPU resources. And then, yeah, actually we should uh, do the transport transition, which is also the one doing the most, taking the most resources. So a way to find out if you're close to your GPU uh, threshold is to perform the, this transition. And you see we don't drop frames so we're not really close and then you go to tools options and you increase your super sampling to the maximum it will always drop some frames when you change that but but after that you can actually try you see i dropped one frames now i dropped one frame again so now we're now we're close to to what the gpu can handle but then when I, if I lower the super sampling, we should be fine. Now I know I have some margin. So let's reset it. Now I know I have some margin on the GPU and we should be fine. Well, I think that was uh, everything. Thank you very much for, for watching and see you again.